<laughs> Praise the Lord. Talk about chaos. I finally have gotten to the place where I can start, Lord willing, <laughs> to record again. It's like so much has been going on that really I haven't even had a chance to come outside, you know, to do video recordings because I've been so busy setting up things, you know, for winter and the chill. And we're just now into our second or third day of a really cold snap that, quite frankly, if you look behind me, these plants wouldn't survive if they didn't have some place to go besides inside. So what you can't see is stage left <laughs> or right, whichever way you want to look at it. I've kind of like built a little mini greenhouse so that way I can put all of our plants back inside to keep them warm at night because it gets pretty cold sometimes. You know, and being in Southern California, you don't get that many cold snaps. But when you do, you got to bring your plants inside. And that's kind of what sometimes happens in a Christian's life is you need to go inside, you know, when things have gotten so bad outside, you know, kind of like get back into the Word because you've been outside of the Word for so long that you're more of the world than you are the Word. You ever found yourself that way? More of the world than the Word? I'm not quite sure how we get that way, how distracted we can become, that we put more of the world in us than the Word. You kind of need to balance that out and figure that out for yourself because we're told by scriptures to be con not conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, that we might prove what is the perfect and acceptable will of God in Christ Jesus. So we're supposed to be constantly filtering out what you hear behind me, you know, the workaholic and the work days and all this kind of stuff that we have to do every day, you know, work with our hands. But we're supposed to be moving in the spirit and working with our heart, with our hands, so that God could use that time that we're in the world for his word to be accomplished. In other words, he wants to bring the word to the world, not the world to the word. <laughs> I'm sorry. When you do it that way, guess what happens? You find out the world has already been written in the word, and it ain't going to end very pretty. But when you take the word into the world, wow, it transforms those things that you're going through into something that makes sense. You begin to see that there's a purpose and a design to why the seasons come, to why you work in your job where you're at, doing the things that you're doing, accomplishing those things that you thought were just to, you know, put a roof over your head, you know, put food on the table and provide for your kids. That's easy. God does that. You see, whether you did it or not, God would have accomplished it one way or another. And for some people, that's kind of like, you know, skating by, they think. But really, God gives you work with your hands in order to be about his plan so that either at work or in the ministry, you would be doing something with what you're accomplishing in the world for the word. You know, the word is Jesus. Jesus said, I am the word of God. So whenever you think of the word, you could think of Jesus, but if not, you can just use the word, you know, I mean, it's good, we, uh, we understand. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. <laughs> Same was in the beginning, as was God. But never mind about all that. The point being is that using what you're doing is what God is always doing. He's using what you're doing. Now, it may be using it to accomplish his purpose as far as a blessing to someone, or... Yeah, not so good. It could be using what you're doing to accomplish his will in maybe not being a blessing, but a curse. And you may wind up far from the location you want to be at the end of your life. So really, you need to keep the world in its proper place and the word in its place. Because when you do, then you'll find that the word and the world go hand in hand. Because Jesus didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but he did come into the world that, through the word, he might save the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. They should. They could. It doesn't mean they will. 
Because you see, there's still a determination that each one of us has to make. We have the free will to choose or lose what we've been given. Now we can choose to keep what we got, or we can trade it in for door number two and try to get something better. You know, kind of get out there and negotiate in the world, you know, with what we got, you know, kind of like, hey, you know, I don't like this, you know, salvation thing. I think I want to try number two or number three or number four. And a lot of people do. They go out and, you know, they let's make a deal. And some of them make a dope deal. Some of them make a business deal. Some of them make a worldly deal. Some of them make a professional deal. Some of them make a political deal. But they make some kind of deal with the word. You know, they want to deal with the world and make a deal with the word. The only problem is Jesus said, did you do the things I said? You see, at the end of your life, when you're done dealing with the world, you still got to deal with God. Ooh, let's make a real deal. <laughs> and that's kind of where, you know, you really want to keep it in perspective. At the end of your life, you're going to be held accountable for what you did with your life. So if it's been in the world and not in the word, then you may wind up where the world is going. And that's not a pleasant place you want to be. So choose this day, you know, to renovate your life. Like I've been doing, I've had to make like a little, a little hothouse for the plants, you know, to take them in when it's too cold and to bring them out for the sunshine. You know, renovate your life. Don't be stuck in a rut, you know, doing the same things over and over again, especially if you're sinning over and over and over again, you know, kind of blowing it or making mistakes, not progressing very much. Change, move, do something different. Try it. You'll see. God said he would provide for us. So sometimes you may need a radical change, you know, to rearrange your life so that you'll either cry out to God in desperation or you'll cry out to God in thanksgiving and exultation. One way or another, hot or cold, you'll know. But you see, it's those lukewarm areas where you get kind of caught up in the world, where you just kind of think everything's going hunky-dory, and it's really not. It's just the same old story. So really, the bottom line is, are you hot? Are you on fire? Are you really doing what you know God has told you to do? Or are you really running the opposite direction? Because if you're running the opposite direction, I can tell you God will do a smackdown on you. Seriously. Yeah, he will. He'll knock you down. Matter of fact, he might even send my posse out after you. We might sick the dogs loose on you, you know. Conviction of the Holy Spirit, you know. Uh, circumstances, you know, arranged in your life to cause you to <laughs> take a bite out of this. Or even being barked at, you know, by the world, kind of like Satan coming after you and, you know, yelling in your ear. You know, you need to kind of figure that one out because if the posse comes after you, I mean, you know, we set the dogs on you. Guess what's going to happen? <laughs> You're going to run <laughs> back to God. So really choose to arrange your life when you run into circumstances like a new chill that suddenly come upon you or something doesn't seem right. Begin to evaluate it maybe You've been sitting in the same place for too long doing the same old thing, and it's just the same old story, just another year. And it can't be. You need to rearrange things, you know, make things new, make them work better than what they were before. That's what we do at video. We're constantly changing things. My wife knows, boy, she goes to work, comes home, and everything's different. <laughs> it's never the same. It's always going on. Something new is going to happen. She knows that. And Jesus said it this way, which I enjoy in my life. The wind bloweth whither it will. You neither know where it's coming from nor where it's going. So too is everyone led by the Spirit of God. I like the fact that, yeah, maybe the last couple months I haven't had a chance to record videos. But I like the fact that I've had a chance to do a lot of remodeling and a lot of things on the web with the web pages and the, the ministry stuff, you know, and to get a lot of this you know, Christmas stuff put away and packed away and, you know, a lot of things set up for summer and spring when we're going to grow some veggies again, you know. <laughs> Last year was an experiment. This year we're going into productivity. <laughs> Last year we tried to grow some corn and all kinds of things and, well, it was interesting. <laughs> it kind of went up and then just didn't really go much farther. And some of it just really didn't turn out so well. So we learned, you know, and adapted to it. So this year we're planning on it, getting a little more organized. And it's going to be fun, because, put it bluntly, we really can't afford the prices most people pay for, like, tomatoes that we eat regularly and some of the other veggies that we like, you know. I mean, there are some veggies on it, I think. Can I grow Pepsi? <laughs> oh, well. But the point being is that 
plan on knowing that we live in the last days. We are the last generation. We have seen the rebirth of the nation of Israel come into the land, and the people that were born of that generation would not perish until they had seen all these things fulfilled. And knowing that we live in these latter days, what manner of person ought we to be? We ought to be people of the word and not people of the world.